In today's video, we're going over five things that you need to know whether you're doing a small flower farm as a hobby or as a side hustle. These are the most crucial things to flower farming that I found in the three going on four years of doing this. Matter of fact, because I didn't follow these steps, I'm pausing my flower farm this year to really reflect and think hard on what I want to do going forward and being sure to follow these five crucial steps. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Jessie and I am a small flower farmer in zone 8B, Ruston, Louisiana. Up until 2020, I was known as a plant killer until I decided to finally give it a shot, put some effort in, and start my own flower farm. I've been selling flowers at my farmer's market for the past three years until this past summer where I unfortunately had to put my farm on pause. If this is not the first time we're meeting and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing because it really does help the channel. About 70% of you are not subscribed. And if you're enjoying this video or you get value out of this video, be sure to smash that like button as it helps YouTube know to share it with others. Thank you. So the first thing I want to tell you before you start your form, before you buy all the seeds, is keep it simple, keep it small. If you're anything like me, you have discovered flower farming thanks to some random YouTube video or by coming across Garden Answer with her beautiful fields of cut flowers, shrubs, and gardens, or maybe Florette got you. All three got me back in 2020 and I went down a flower spiral of things and you know then ended up buying all the books you know cool flowers cut flower garden discovering dahlias and a year of flowers I bought it all and you know what else I did I bought all the seeds this these are all campanula why did I buy dianthus? I don't even like dianthus. How many delphiniums did you order, Jesse? Why did I think I needed this many varieties? <laughs> I don't need this many varieties. Oh my God. I may have overdone it with my diet order this year, guys. So I said I wouldn't order that many this year. Maybe, maybe 10 max. 10 dahlias max. That's all I'm gonna order. But that's not what came in. So the dahlia started rolling in earlier last week and they kept rolling in and now these are all the dahlias. Might have ordered over 250 dahlias. And unfortunately it really took me three years for this lesson of keep it simple, keep it small, which is what they all preach, sunk in to my brain. And <laughs> now I'm like, oh crap, I'm, I'm burnt out. I don't even want to think about forming because I didn't keep it simple and keep it small. I went way too big. I bought all the seeds. I tried to grow everything and I went from, you know, a medium sized flower farm to an extra large flower farm. It <laughs> started out, I can do this to, I had thousands of sunflowers and then when a storm came in and blew them all down, I was devastated. So the main reason we're going to keep it simple, keep it small is one, to keep you from getting overwhelmed. There's a ton of seeds out there. There's a ton of plants. And if you try to plant everything or thousands of them at once, you're going to have issues. You're going to have pest issues. You're going to have weeds. Yes, landscape fabric helps. But did you know that those weeds can grow in anything, including landscape fabric? Doesn't matter how good that landscape fabric is, those weeds will literally root like on top and grow. And then they'll come through the holes as well. It's ridiculous, the weeds. So keep it simple, keep it small, especially your first year or two. Choose three flowers, a focus, a filler, and a spike to grow, and then choose two fillers that you can throw in with that. So five plants total. Those are the only types of flowers. That's what you need, just five to start with, and maybe 10 to 20 each of those plants. I wouldn't do any more than that. Matter of fact, I have a video on my top five cut flowers that I think a beginner should start with. I'll link that video down in the description below. Be sure to check it out. These top five that I chose can be grown in soil blocks or direct sown to make it nice and easy for you. Second thing you need to know is you need to make your choice. 
Are you going to grow cool flowers? Are you going to grow spring flowers? Are you going to grow summer flowers? As someone who has tried to do all three, <laughs> let me tell you, it is a mess. One, you need a lot of room to grow all these because you need a space for your cool flowers to grow. You need a space for the spring flowers that are going to overlap with the cool flowers. And then you need a space for your summer flowers. Because if you think you're going to put your summer flowers where the cool flowers were, you are mistaken because they're going to green up and stay kind of green well into the summer when you should be planting those summer flowers. It doesn't work. Make your choice, especially in those first two years. Cool flowers, summer flowers, or spring flowers. I will say the one thing you probably can get away with is bulbs for spring and then having summer flowers as long as they're in two complete different areas. Do not try to grow all three at once within your first two years. It's going to just, it's not good. It's a lot. Cool flowers are, in my opinion, way more maintenance than the summer flowers just because of the weed control of these plants. When you plant them in the fall, they don't get very big at first. They stay small, especially during the winter. So you're having to fight those weeds knowing that when spring gets here, they're going to bush out and you need all that room. So weed control in the winter is no joke. Not to mention harvesting. So when you're growing cool flowers and you're harvesting them, it's time for them, they're doing their thing in the spring. Well, it's time to start planting spring and summer flowers. So you're sitting here trying to harvest and do farmer's market while also take care of seedlings and prep and plant in these summer flowers. It's, it's not fun. Make your choice and go with one or either spring and summer. Do not try and do cool and summer at the same time. It's just, don't thank me later. I'd like to take a moment to welcome our new pedal crew members, Sherry Glaster and Colorado Tulips. Thank you and welcome to joining the pedal crew. Hope you enjoy those membership emojis that you get to use now. I also want to take a moment to thank Beth G for her buymeacoffee.com donation. Thank you all so much. Y'all are the reason we get to continue doing this farm and be able to do the front yard transformation project and uploading videos like this. If you would like to support the farm, you can do so by joining the channel membership or by going to my buymeacoffee.com page which is located in the description below. Thank you guys as always and let's get back into the video. Third thing you really need to know is color palette. What colors are you going to grow? I said step one keep it simple keep it small. Choose those five flowers those five plants but not only do you need to choose those five plants you need to choose what colors of those five plants. Do you know how many zinnia seeds I have? How many types of zinnia seeds I have? Zinnia is one flower. I have like 23 seeds, 23 different varieties of zinnias alone. And did I try to grow all of them? Heck yes, I did. So choose your color palette and choose like one, two colors max to grow of that flower. Don't be sitting there trying to grow 23 different zinnias, 10 different cosmos. It's, just, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Serena, Nicole, Garden Answer, they can all do that. If you're working a full-time job and you're trying to do this and you don't have much room, we, I would recommend it. It's doable. I've done it. I am now a burnt out farmer. But I would just grow all of them and then put together what looks good, which is great. It offers a great variety to my customers. However, it also added I never had enough of one particular color it was also an issue. So I would highly recommend picking one, two colors max to stick with and make sure all the colors that you choose of those flowers mix together beautifully. Like maybe have a pink Dahlia Zinnia into Key Lime, Key Lime, Queen Lime Zinnia to go with some beautiful cosmos that are white or blush pink and then you add in some basil and some salosa oh, that is a beautiful bouquet add in a sunflower if you want to but having that oh it's gorgeous that just makes me want to start forming again even though i don't need to need a break i'm burnt out number four thing you need to know is grow what works in your zone has a grower in the south, I'm located in zone 8B, 
North Louisiana to be more exact, uh, it really helps to know what thrives in your zone and when you can plant it. You're going to see these videos of these growers up in Canada in the north growing these beautiful lisianthus and these beautiful dahlias and honey dahlias aren't for you if you're living here in the south they're not for you unless you figured out that hey they need morning sun and afternoon shade got a great video on my dahlia experiment put that down in the description below be sure to check that out where i attempted to grow dahlias just because a flower says all day sun does not mean all day sun in your zone. Learn that the hard way. Just because it says part shade may not mean part shade in your zone. You need to figure out what grows best in your zone and how to grow it in your zone. For instance, zinnias. You'll see where people say, hey, you can grow them anywhere from six inches to 12 inches and that they'll do great, you know, space wise. If I spaced my zinnias at four to six inches, they would get so much disease. Hey Gus. I present you the farm pug. Hey Gus, you little pug. Yes, this is the farm pug. Yes. You see the tail? <laughs> the tail is growing. I would have so much disease in mildew because we're hot and we're humid and these plants need room to breathe. So really take that time to see what grows well in your zone and don't just order plants seeing that they thrive in full sun and ordering them because uh, another great lesson was crocuses I thought I could grow crocuses out in daffodil field so I ordered like 50 to 100 something crocuses and do you know how big they got do you they were like this big for the ones that did bloom they were that tiny I am not exaggerating I saw crocuses on garden answer and they were these you know, decent size, beautiful flowers. And then I had these. Yeah. Do your research, figure out what grows well in your zone to really set yourself up for success. Fifth thing I really wish I would have known and I really hope that you take this one to heart and that you invest in this. And that is shrubs for cut flowers, foliage mainly. You're going to need foliage. And if you look through, like, my favorite videos to watch are Europe's mixed flower bouquets. Oh, they, their bouquets are beautiful because they have all these different greens, green foliage in it. And then these beautiful pops of color. But what really makes a bouquet are these filler foliage plants. And I didn't want to waste my money on shrubs. Oh, sorry, Gus. I didn't want to waste my money on shrubs. I just didn't. And last year was the first year I was like, okay, I need shrubs. And I invested in a privet and a forsythia and some crabapple trees. And really, I'm setting myself up for in the future when I get ready to go back into flower farming, I'll have greenery. I'll be able to add a variety of greenery of these nice low maintenance plants that I don't have to sow seeds. I don't have to care for them and baby them. I just go out there and cut on them. It's wonderful. I made bouquets for myself this past season by just going out there and cutting on those bushes and it is so nice. So really invest in those shrubs. I will give a shout out to Florette. A year in flowers has a whole section on foliage and I would go through here if I were you and I would see I would google what grows well in your zone and get a shrub or two in that matter of fact I would like three or four of the shrubs uh for scythias in here and privet so I got those and holy mackerel at how wonderful they are my only issue is the deer have eaten my forsythia but invest invest in shrubs in trees now you've heard the saying the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago the next best time to plant a tree is right now so if you're serious about flower farming even as a small hobby farm invest in this shrubbery that way you've got this beautiful foliage 
to go and you don't have to worry about reseeding basil or mint or whatever filler you're using every single year. You can still plant those if you want to, but now you have the option, especially if you do evergreens, to go with your tulips. I mean, it's just such uh, a wish I would have done that three years ago. Do you know how many shrubs I could have had? <sighs> and some shrub perennials. I just spit. Shrub perennials like limelight hydrangeas and things that just come back year after year. That is one of the main reasons why I'm pausing this flower farm is so I can really focus on getting these perennials in low maintenance plants so I can harvest for my cut flower garden without having to reseed and reuse the soil over and over again, making this farm easier on myself. So those are my five tips. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a great video on how to grow sunflowers from seed all the way to farmer's market. Be sure to check that out here. And then I've also got a great one on tulips that you can check right here. I hope I'll see you there.